Hello everyone, <laughs> I'm Dr. Angela Puca and welcome to my live symposium <laughs> and uh, obviously happy Sowin or Halloween or however you celebrate this um, uh, festivity and this day in the Northern Hemisphere and I guess also ha happy Bielsena for those who celebrate uh, in the Southern Hemisphere. But um, yeah, <laughs> being in the northern hemisphere today, we will, it will be about sewing. So um, thank you everybody for coming. <laughs> Let me see who's there. Oh, hi, Astro Gypsy and uh, Liesla and Alan uh, and Ron, uh, Neha, uh, Kai and Andrew, of course, um, Carlos, Craig. Yeah, it's really nice to see you guys. Oh, and Jeanette, of course. Jeanette Waverly. Uh, Stephen Schaeffer. <laughs> uh, he says, Happy Halloween. I mean, Sawin. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah. Uh, thank you, everyone, for being here. <laughs> and I hope more will join. Uh, the first thing that I'd like to say uh, as we start this live stream. Uh, is that I uh, I'd like to you know since this is a festivity to honor the dead um, I'm wearing something from uh, my dad uh, which is this ring and uh, he passed away uh, 11 years ago and uh, this is from a friend and colleague who unfortunately disappeared a month ago uh, Rosemary <laughs> so uh, yeah I thought it would be nice to bring them along in a way and uh, celebrate with us uh, since as we will see and this is um, a festivity where um, there's the belief that um, you know uh, the dad can communicate with us more easily and can access these words so uh, perhaps it might be nice to uh, allow them to feel in case they are able to uh, to feel that to to feel remembered hi james nice to see you in the chat um and also the um, i hope that you are liking the background music <laughs> is from uh, one of my best friends um and he wants to be called mr cup so <laughs> thank you mr cup for uh, for providing the music uh quite last minute to be fair uh, yesterday i told him i need the music to <laughs> as a background for my live stream uh, but he was really nice and he made it, so hopefully you will like it. You will like it. Hi, Cipriano! Another one of my close friends. <laughs> um, uh, it's nice to see that all of you are yeah, wishing me and the others a happy sewing or happy Halloween or however you celebrate this festivity. Uh, oh, Ron says I'm wearing my mother's silver ring as, as always. Oh! <laughs> That's nice. <coughs> and Neha says that the music the music was awesome. Oh, the intro music actually is from my band. <laughs> um, the e Eros music band. Uh, and even the outro, I don't know if you ever noticed that the outro of all of my videos are actually sung, sung by me. And the, these are songs from um, my past life <laughs> before academia where I used to be a singer. I guess that I'm still a singer, but I'm not uh, singing anymore. Mm, but yeah, we will see. Perhaps in the future I will start again. <laughs> but um, today I'd like to give you a very short talk presentation on Samhain. Uh, but then also I'd like to interact with you guys. So uh, be ready to <laughs> tell me things, your traditions, what you do on this day, um, you know, in case you come from different countries, what are the traditions in your country. I will share a tradition from my uh, home region in Italy as well, because I thought it would be interesting. Uh, oh, Ra Raziel is saying, I knew that was you singing. <laughs> yeah, I think that not everybody uh, realizes that it is me singing in the outro <laughs> of, of my videos. But yeah, we are the children of darkness. That's the name of the song. <laughs> so, um, moving on to the, um, the short talk, uh, because uh, otherwise I'd like to interact with you guys. 
as always do know that um you know if you want to ask a question directly to me it makes it easier for me to um you know to sort of immediately tell which ones are questions for me uh, because i i know that you also interact um among yourself which is absolutely fine and i actually encourage you to do so but um in order for me to at a glance <laughs> immediately understand that that is um, a message for me please put a, put question in caps lock so that it's easier for me to to gather uh, whether the question is for me <laughs> so um today we will be briefly discussing as i mentioned sawin and um I think that now is pretty much common knowledge that it is likely that um, the modern festival, the contemporary festival of Halloween, comes from Samhain, that was um, an ancient Celtic uh, festival. And Samhain likely comes from, Samhain is pronounced like this in modern Irish, and it's not certain what the pronunciation would be in Old Irish, but it likely meant summer's end. And uh, it was believed to be a liminal time where the gates between this world and the next open. And uh, it, is, it is possible to communicate with the spirits of the dead and also to uh, even uh, div to do vi divination that was also, that appears to be also uh, very common in the in the tradition uh, like even for a young women to try and tell what the initial name of their future husband would be and um, also yeah th there were like a, a lot of divinations connected to marriages and and your future of course uh, I would imagine that um, in the past uh, such things were quite pivotal to understand how your life <laughs> was going to unfold so it was most likely a festival to welcome the dead, the spirits of the dead, for a short time at the edge of the dark season. So um, the the old Irish people used to, um, you know, the, the days for them were not really measured by the the days, but by the nights, and that is why the festival starts when the when the sun sets, which here it has set already <laughs> um but um i guess that for most of you perhaps it's a di you are uh, on a different time zone so perhaps where you are is morning <laughs> but um yeah sawin would start at the end of the 31st of october quite likely uh something that is um that is very interesting to, to point out and actually my friend and fellow scholar uh, Dr. Jenny Butler has talked about in, a, um, in an interview that we did but uh, she also mentioned that in other interviews um, about Zawin when she was interviewed about uh, this specific topic she's actually much more knowledgeable than I am <laughs> on everything Irish folklore uh, and also, if you're interested in uh, learning more about what I'm saying, I, I would also recommend you read uh, The Stations of the Sun by Ronald Hutton. I will be putting all the references in the info box once the, the live stream ends. So, something quite interesting that uh, Jenny pointed out is that um, fairies were in more in ancient times associated with the dead and they were also associated with the with the festival of Samhain um, and it is more modern the idea of the fairies that we have portrayed in media um, whereas in the past it used to, the fairies used to be quite linked to the spirits of the dead uh, which equally just as the spirits of the dead would be more present at this time of the year and in this liminal space also something that is often pointed out by scholars is that uh, it is quite difficult to track the historical traditions of Samhain and lots of things uh, with regards to the ancient celtic folklore and traditions and that is for two main reasons the one is that we have many more myths and mythology than we have historical records and the second is that the actual historical sources come from the post-christian era and so they are not 
as accurate um, especially because when the historical registers were, were made the those festivals were still dying out um, at least they were dying out the, the way they had been uh, practiced for a long long time and so it's very difficult to trace back what actually happened so uh, you will find that scholars will will say like most most likely that is what was going to happen like most likely Sawin was uh, wasn't uh, a sad or um, it was a mm, I wouldn't say happy celebration but it was a, a way of welcoming you know for a very short time the mm, the spirits of the dead back on this plane and you could in a way interact with them it's it, it was also very uh, common to um, you know, to, to host a, a, a dumb, uh, I think it was a, a dumb supper or a dumb dinner, meaning a silent, uh, a silent dinner, uh, which is also common uh, across other traditions. Uh, and it would be a silent dinner or a dinner or a meal offered to uh, the dead people. And it could be um, people who had passed away in your, in your family, but also uh, people in the neighborhood, uh, for instance, that was uh, also something that used to occur um, in ancient times. And then at the end of the 19th century, uh, we have these two, uh, two scholars uh, from Oxford and Cambridge that actually uh, were contributed massively to shaping the idea that we have now of Samhain and even ho how Samhain was uh, re reinterpreted and reclaimed by contemporary pagans. Uh, for instance, one of the things that Sir John Rice uh, said was that uh, this was the Celtic New Year and it's mm, Ronald Hatton says that there's not enough evidence that it is actually correct, historically correct, um, and it is because the 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 way um, Samhain used to be celebrated was quite similar to the way the New Year was celebrated, and also it was perceived as the end of a cycle and the beginning of another cycle. And so, for these two reasons, um, that brought uh, Sir John Rice to believe that it could have been the the Celtic New Year and then Sir James Fraser in his famous The Golden Bow or, or Golden Bow <laughs> um, also backed this view and uh, provided more information on the the types of rituals that were performed uh, for sowing like for instance one of the things that uh, Sir James Fraser um, wrote in his book and um, you know and and claimed was that there was the use of fire for protection and also that this was um, a fire festival um, which is which is interesting there are m many of the things that have been associated by pagans uh, when reclaiming this pre-christian festival to celebrate this time of the year actually do come from uh, these two scholars and the kind of reconstruction that they did of the um, the ancient you know the older sources but not always they they were actually historically accurate then the tradition was brought to the usa by irish and highland uh, immigrants uh, du during the 19th century and so you here have the tradition of dressing up and later uh, it developed into the trick and trick or treat that you that you know today and then as you know the pre-christian tradition was reclaimed by Wiccans and later by other pagans and magic practitioners and uh, it's interesting because here well obviously Wiccans and pagans now uh, prefer to call it Sowin because they want to emphasize the fact that they are um, connecting and celebrating something that is not connected to Christianity, but it, but that uh, you know it dates way back before Christianity. And also, um, um, for pagans, it is not just about. It is also about, of course, uh, celebrating the um, the spirits of the dead and. Um, having this element incorporated but it is also and this is true for the other festivals the eight 
festivals of the wheel of the year. Um, it is a, also a way of connecting to the season. In paganism, there is a lot of this sense of seasonality um, because especially quite often pagans would say in the past we were at direct contact with nature but now when you know we live in in apartments or in flats or in houses and quite often we don't have a direct contact with nature unless we purposefully um, decide to so when you grab an apple from a supermarket or a grocery store you don't see the the, the branch of the tree so you you kind of lose that connection you you lose that connection that that apple was actually connected to a tree and that tree will has roots that go into the earth and um this is something that um, pagans tend to emphasize and say since even though now we live in a um you know to different degrees more disconnected from nature there are many ways whereby we can connect with nature again and being in tune with the seasons and reflecting also on how the seasons outside mirror the seasons inside is also important to have to to um you know to fuel this sense of and to prompt this sense of connection and so you have the idea that uh you know when the time the time we are now in the dark time of the year in the northern hemisphere of course um and so this means that you know when the when everything is dark at outside there's there is a need uh, pagans would say to focus on the light inside and also by connecting to this time of darkness it is also a time of uh, to focus on the you know everything that is within yourself rather than uh to uh extrovert to be extroverts and uh, be more open to the outside and be more um kind of connected to what is occurring in the outside world so the the dark time of the year is a time of um reflection and being within yourself and cultivating the light within you un until you see it reappearing outside of you and then the lighter part of the year is more about connections and interactions and being more outwardly rather than inwardly so i think that it's quite interesting how pagans tend to have these um metaphorical and in a way allegorical interpretation of the of the seasons and what happens uh, outside and how to allow yourself to connect to what happens and by doing so be more being more attuned uh, with nature um and yeah by the end of the middle ages the christian feast uh, the christian feast of the death um known as Halotide, Holotide or Allantide, I'm not sure whether these pronunciations are correct, had developed into, spec uh, into a spe spectacular affair for which there are ample records in, in England. So we do have um, lots of historical records of this according to Ronald Hutton. Now I'd like to end uh, this short talk with a... Um, um, talking about the, uh, the um, these calls in Italy. Well, thank you so much, Jeanette, for your donation. <laughs> uh, so there is, uh, th this is something that, uh, this is a cemetery in, in Naples, Italy. And it is called in, in Italian Cimitero delle Fontanelle. And uh, I, I guess you can translate it as the cemetery of the little fountains but <laughs> it doesn't make much sense in English. Um, and uh, it's quite interesting because uh, here you find anonymous or abandoned human skulls, and it is like thousands and thousands of skulls. And there is a very um, interesting vibe in this place in Naples. I've been there quite a few times. 
and um, it is also called in English the cult of Pezzentelle souls and uh, Pezzentelle in Neapolitan means poor so it's like the cult of the poor souls uh, perhaps they were considered to be poor because they they were abandoned uh, they are also called in Neapolitan capuzelle, uh, which means like a little heads in Neapolitan and also souls of the purgatory and uh, it's great as you can see here uh, you have these little boxes or like little houses because these um, there were people that used to now I think it's forbidden by law uh, but there used to be this tradition that people would uh, take these uh, skulls and bring them home and adopt them so they would adopt um, a skull give them a name and ask for um, their interception to obtain something in their lives uh, like uh, healing or um, love or you know different magical um, outcomes uh, and and then when they would get what they asked the the school to do they, they would bring it back they would bring it back to the cemetery oh uh, hi uh, thank you for the donation uh, hellbound Ethan uh, he says happy sewing Halloween Angela I really respect your work thank you for your videos oh thank you so much that means a lot <laughs> And uh, so I, I think it's quite interesting because, uh, you know, you have and you still have since now people cannot bring them home anymore. Uh, you will have that people will bring like little coins and give or flowers and give them to the uh, to the schools. Uh, and in some cases, they still give them names. Uh, so, yeah, I think I always found it to be quite fascinating as a as a tradition. And it's not necessarily connected to this time of the year. It's not necessarily connect to, connected to Halloween or the Day of the Dead. But um, yeah, I thought it was the, the right time <laughs> to, to bring that up. <laughs> so now I'd like to hear from you guys. Let me know how you're celebrating and, um, you know, what do you think of Samhain, uh, whether you celebrate the, um, the festivity as as a Christian, as a pagan, what kind of traditions do you have? Do you think that Samhain has a particular significance for those who practice magic? Because I know that you guys are from all over the world and uh, you are you have different belief systems but i'm pretty sure that most of you are interested in magic if you're here so <laughs> uh so perhaps if if not um focusing on i mean we could also talk about the um, how you you celebrate according to your belief system but also what kind of significance do you think that sewing or you know th this specific festival has for you in terms of your magic practice that would be quite interesting uh, for us to discuss i think so let me see if there are any questions mm. Ozzy SD says, uh, I am wearing a eight card gold on silver necklace that belonged to my maternal grand grandmother. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> and Liesle says, the, um, the sun is just setting in the UK. Yeah, we are exactly at that liminal, <laughs> um, that liminal time. Oh, thank you so much, James, for, for your donation. You're always so generous. <laughs> I wish I had, you know, like... Uh, the, I wish the widget had a, a chicken. <laughs> because now we, you know, from last live stream, there was the joke about uh, donations being like chickens. Well, no, he started saying that teachers are paid chickens I think it was from um, Thomas I'm not sure if he's in the chat um, 
let me see if there are uh, Liesle says I'm honoring all ancestors tonight may I honor all of your ancestors and everyone <laughs> I think that that's nice of you <laughs> I'm, I'm not seeing questions so far oh Marcus says I'm celebrating with with a wheel of the year ceremony to invoke Zafkiel Ar Archangel of the dark feminine oh is it because you um connect this time of the year to dark, dark feminine the dark feminine or is it something that you are uh, working on at the moment yeah yesterday with my patrons I was um, saying that uh, since I have to propose um, a paper for the com the next conference of the European Association for the study of religions it's very long but if I say EASR <laughs> you wouldn't understand what I talk about because it's you know the acronyms um, are always hard to understand um, and so I have to propose a paper to the paganism the, the panel on contemporary paganism and since the theme is deities in contemporary paganism I was thinking of um, doing research on a deity that um, that you guys might find like me to might like me to um, cover on the channel and so I think that I might choose Hecate uh, and there was also a cult of Hecate in in Naples in Italy where I come from and lots of pagans in over there are connected to Hecate. Mm. Joao says he was wearing a Ghostbuster suit. <laughs> Who was wearing the Ghostbuster suit? Um, I think this is a, a conversation with other with others in the chat. Oh, Marcus says it's part of work with archangels of the Kabbalah. Okay. Mm. How do you relate this day to Luciferianism? Mm, I'm not sure there is a direct connection to Luciferianism, but um, to be fair, apart from pagans, lots of magic practitioners who follow various kinds of tradition now incorporate in one way or another this this festival this festivity mm. but yeah i'm not i'm not aware of specific connections with luciferianism <clears throat> hellbound heathen says what do you think of the development of trick or trading how do you think it developed might be you are specific yeah, I'm not very familiar to that with, with that specific development, but I think that Ronan Hatton mentions that briefly in his book, the the Sessions of the Sun. Uh, but even in that case, I'm not sure whether there are lots of historical records of that. Although at the time there there should there should have been, but yeah, honestly, I I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, Celestara asks, uh, was Samhain celebrated only in Great Britain or was it across what is now Europe, like in France? Mm. I think that Samhain, the way we know it, yeah, it comes from uh, Ireland and, and Britain. But yeah, in this time I think that um, what you can find in different countries is s some kind of tradition related to celebrating the, the dead, but not exactly as sewing. It would be it would be different. Oh hi Thomas. I just mentioned you earlier about the 
the one who started the, the chicken joke. <clears throat> uh, question, is Hecate a precursor to the Blessed Virgin Mary? No. <laughs> I'm sorry, but th these are very... Um, I don't know if you saw the interview with Manon, uh, Manon Hedenborg white on um, the female saint Lima. And she, one of the things that she mentions, um, because one of the questions that she got was on the possible connection between Babylon and other, other female deities, is that um, this is something that practitioners tend to do. They want to draw connections between different deities and even different traditions, but um, it's not what historical evidence often suggests. But that doesn't mean that you're not allowed to do that. I mean, when it comes to personal religious beliefs, I think that, you know, it's not something that has to be dictated by historical records. But uh, if the question is in terms of history, then I would say no. <clears throat> Neha says, just sharing here in India, we have a different tradition of honoring the dead. It is called uh, Pitru Paksha was was in last month oh that's interesting mm. oh marcus says it's hecate's birthday everyone can try the hecate global right that jason miller created it's a perfect beginner ritual yeah i am familiar with his work yeah um it's a contemporary practitioner as we would say in <laughs> uh, among scholars but i know that he defines himself as a sorcerer um i think norse pagans have a similar celebration to Samhain, but uh, by a different name <clears throat> uh your one about uh Samhain and halloween not being one and the same thing when they are uh, okay I'm <laughs> I think that I'm a bit lost mm. Jeanette Waverly says when I was a kid I loved Halloween even more than Christmas I always wondered where it came from hmm yeah in, in Italy we have the the All Saints Day on the 1st of November and the Day of the Dead would be the 2nd of November and the tradition would usually be to go to the cemetery and bring flowers to the, um, the, the deceased people in your family but now uh, we have also imported the, the, the Halloween tradition from the US and this happens quite often. <laughs> uh, Italy seems to be quite influenced by um, the US culturally. And so now there are, uh, you know, you start to see the um, trick, trick or treating in Italy as well. But it's still, it's still not common. And uh, there are always Catholics that uh, rebel to, to that practice saying that it is satanic and uh, that Catholics should not do that. Mm. So have I missed any question? <laughs> Why not just sub subscribe? <laughs> That's a, a funny nickname. <clears throat> um, Donna Emerald says, uh, Sawin is older uh, all allos eve is fifth century onwards i think uh Samhain is big and irish yeah um yeah definitely Samhain was older and uh scholars now agree that uh halloween comes from Samhain. although of course it's it's a bit it's a bit different but Something that um, sometimes it's brought up uh, even by um, 
Now, we mentioned that with uh, Jennifer Azel in the uh, in the interview paganism versus christianity i think it was called something like that um we mentioned that although it is true that most christian festivals are come from paganism in one way or another and to different extents in some cases you also see that pagan the way uh, pagans conceptualize their practices and their festivals is also influenced by Christianity and uh, so it could be one of those because there there have been elements of uh, the the Christian halomas that have been that have penetrated and got reshaped uh, by by pagans when they reclaimed uh, Samhain in its pre-christian version Hmm. Hmm. Jeanette Weverly says the, the death of the warm half of the year but then I've always been a lumper The rich Maldon says, Happy Halloween, everybody. Happy Halloween to you too. <laughs> oh, hi, Craig. Uh, thank you for, for your donation. Is there a connection between um, Sabbath and Jewish beliefs? Do you mean the pagan use of the term Sabbath? Uh, and then you like my work. Thank you. So, um, no, I don't think that the, the idea of the pagan Sabbath is particularly connected to Jewish beliefs. Um, it's interesting because I once asked um, a professor of mine, he specialized in uh, medieval and Renaissance philosophy, and uh, he had um, a series of seminars on magic. This was back in Italy. Um, and I asked him, where does the term Sabbath comes from, uh, you know, in association with witchcraft, I mean. And he said that in the first occurrence of it was in the, um, what's the term that I'm looking for? Um, you know, during the witch trials, the records of the witch trials, that was the first occurrence of the term in relation to witchcraft. And then it was uh, reclaimed or used, you know, reclaimed again by uh, Wiccans and Pagans because it became over time strictly, it got over time strictly connected to, to witchcraft and to the practice of magic. But it's not really clear, I mean, wh why, you know, why they associated the term Sabbath with, uh, with witchcraft. It could be, it could have some link with Judaism, but it's very unclear. There are actually so many things in history that are, <laughs> that are very unclear. And um, I know that sometimes we we would like to have, you know, straightforward, uh, straight answers on things. But yeah, sometimes history is more frustrating <laughs> that you <laughs> that you would like to that, that one might like to admit. Oh, hi from Ireland. Hi. <laughs> Uh, what's the best way to honor the giant floating spaghetti god today? <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a good question. Um, I think that eating and perhaps offering some of it to the spirits of the dead <laughs> might be the best way to to honor the the spaghetti monster. I have yeah, you know that I. That I don't have that video on my on my YouTube channel anymore. So <laughs> only those who have stayed here long enough <laughs> know what the reference to the spaghetti monster is about. So clumsy creations says, uh, "Adore the music. Is there a place I can go to 
re-listen to it later later on um i think just this live stream <laughs> no there it isn't anywhere at the moment but i can ask the the artist whether he wants to put it you know on youtube or something um, I've been telling him that he should have, you know, like a, a YouTube channel even just for the music. James says history is messy. Yes, it definitely is. Does Hecate have any connection to Sawin? I wouldn't say to Sawin, but to definitely to to do that uh because uh you know to the communication with the spirits uh because she's a, a psychopomp uh so um she has this uh she what's the term that i'm looking for uh, tonight i'm not <laughs> working properly uh my brain is not working properly i mean uh but yeah uh she is a, a deity she was considered and st is still considered by contemporary pagans as a deity associated with spirit spirit communication and allowing spirits to move um so yeah i would say that they're not a connection to sawin but a connection to spirits and uh spirits of the dead and the uh, function of being a psychopomp Um, Cipriano says, my mother sometimes told me about her father, my grandfather, who used to carve pumpkins on October 31st. He didn't know why, but he said, but he said I'd always seen her father do it, um, to us traditions of dads. Oh. Mm, this is interesting because we, we are talking about 50 years ago and beyond. The influence of the media and globalization was not um, as it is today. Yeah. Hmm. I want to know, I want to know more about that. <clears throat> are you the Cipriano that I know? <laughs> because I, ca I can see whether... Oh yeah, it is uh, in Naples. So you are the Cipriano <laughs> that I think you are. <laughs> Um, I know what other popular traditions, uh, about other popular traditions of Napoli, Naples, really similar to, um, what today is considered to be Halloween. Hmm. Yeah, there are definitely lots of parallelisms across different cultures and different traditions. Um, and... Yeah, it's like it, I, I find I think that um, perhaps both aspects are important to to address both a, a unitarian aspect where you try and see the you do a sort of comparative study of the different traditions. The problem is that when you come from a place of being a religious or a magic practitioner, there's a tendency of overdoing it. Uh, oversimplifying the different traditions to and in a way mer merge everything together and that is kind of a that um, sort of uh, risks to flatten the complexity that is pr really present in every in every single tradition and every culture deserves to be study, studied and understood in its own right so that's the the risk that one might incur into but i'm not against finding parallelisms absolutely sam sam uh, is asking what's the background music uh, as i said in the beginning it was um made by um a close friend of mine um he he goes by mr cap <laughs> on the internet uh but yeah, if you like it, I can ask whether he he's willing to upload it on YouTube. Uh, Joao says, uh, in some places in Portugal, there's an old tradition to carve turnips instead of pumpkins during harvest season. Oh. Oh, 
Bye, James. Ciao. Um, so it's a, a good time to sacrifice Berli to Mokosh and Mead to Veles. <laughs> I wish you would talk about uh, Rod Novery in a future video. Yeah, we will see. Definitely, I will I will keep doing. <laughs> uh, I will keep working on the YouTube channel. So, uh, in the future, we will have different topics to cover. Lots of topics to cover. Oh, thank you, uh, Nyahoi, <laughs> for I hope I'm pronouncing it right uh, for your donation. Uh, th thank you for sharing your knowledge with us. Oh, thank you so much. I think that when it comes to the topic of Samhain and Halloween, I don't feel extremely knowledgeable just because there are so many traditions all over the world that is impossible to, to to be an expert of all of them. So you can, especially as a scholar, I feel that um, perhaps from the from a practitioner's perspective is a bit different, but scholars tend to be hyper specialized on one area. So um, it's extremely difficult to be an expert of a hundred different traditions uh, and a hundred different festivals. But uh, I'm glad that you that you appreciate spending some time with me. I think it was more about you know spending some time together and celebrating together. Oh, thank you, Marcus, for for your donation. Um, question: What's your favorite horror movie? <laughs> What's my favorite horror movie? Hmm. I guess The Craft <laughs> comes to mind because uh, it's kind of a um, tradition of mine to rewatch The Craft uh, on Halloween, Halloween. Uh, but yeah, I really like The Craft. I, I guess that the, um, the story is not exceptional, but it's one of those one of those movies that really. You know, when you have those movies that you associate to a time in your life, and um, so that's why I really like it. And also, it's kind of a uh, a status symbol for uh, goth people, <laughs> especially Nancy. What is your favorite horror movie, Marcus? Now I want to know. Oh, uh, Neha uh, is asking which platform are you using for streaming? Um, I'm using Streamlabs, but perhaps you are, if you are referring to the overlay here, it was created by uh, Academic Police. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, the, um, the software is Streamlabs. Edward Iglesias uh, asks, does anyone else do sugar skulls or is that just Mexico? Mm. I think that there used to be a tradition of sugar, sugar skulls or something sugary in Ireland. I'm not completely sure. We don't do that in Italy. Um, and oh, so yeah, I'm not sure. But I think that the Mexican Dia de los Muertos must be, you know, so nice. And speaking of movies, that reminds me of Coco. Um, I don't know if you, if if any of you guys or you Edward watched it. It's quite moving and connected to the Dia de los Muertos. So, Holy Lex says the the Lost Boys is, is the best. Yeah, that that's another nice one too. And then interview with the vampire. Um, Donna Emerald says it was Irish immigrants to the US during the Irish famine of the 1841 that brought the tradition of carving pumpkins there. We didn't have pumpkins in Ireland but turnips. 
So it's similar to what Joao is saying about Portugal. Oh yeah, it almost reminds me of Nightmare, Bef Nightmare uh, Before Christmas. I don't know why I, uh, <laughs> I forgot about it. <laughs> yeah, that's that's really that's a great movie. Another one that I'm attached to. And Donna says now Irish people use pumpkins, uh, as we can buy them here now. No sugar skulls in Ireland, says Donna. Yeah, thank you for clarifying that. Mm. Yeah, as you as you can see, I think that it's quite common, not only between different religious traditions. Like as I was mentioning earlier, you know, Samhain, Halloween comes from Samhain, but uh, the reclamation, the way pagans have started to conceptualize Samhain and practice it and celebrate it still had some influences from Christianity that doesn't only have th this sort of two-way influence doesn't only happen in religions but even in cultures so oh Marcus says um, my favorite horror movie is Hellraiser 1 and 2 can't choose between them oh I've never watched them what are they about <laughs> do they have any anything about magic or <laughs> is it just pure horror I guess that I'm not a big fan of horror movies at least not not the ones that are you know too horror <laughs> they need to have very good story Oh, Neha says to academic police that uh, he has some dope skills. Yeah, <laughs> he does. Donna Emerald, uh, thank you. I did often wonder. Okay. I think it's nice that there are um, so many of you from different places around the world because we can have an exchange of uh, the different traditions. Oh, Animo Bellum says, Buona festa di Halloween in Italian. <laughs> Buona festa anche a te. Marco says, The first Hellraiser series is about using an occult cube to summon, to summon. It portrays beings. Oh, I want to watch it now. <laughs> Joao says, I'm torn between Suspiria and the Hunger. Okay, you're making me feel very ignorant about horror movies now. <laughs> Liesle says, I like the old Hammer horror films. Oh, hi, Ryan. Do you know about Jacobo? Greenberg and his work on shamanism in Mexico. It's incredible. No, I'm not familiar with it. Is he a scholar? I mean an academic. I guess you can be a scholar even without being affiliated to a university. Oh, Reziel Farbat says, what is the indigenous tradition in, in Italia? So that was basically part of my <laughs> PhD research. I, um, you know, one of the things that I did in my PhD research is to systematize the different folk magic traditions, the vernacular healing traditions across the different regions in the country. I systematized them with the name, the tradition of Segnature. And I argued it to be the indigenous Italian shamanism. And uh, of course, that needs lots of clarifications, like on how I use the term indigenous and how I use the term shamanism. Uh, like, f for instance, I argue along with other scholars that the um, term indigenous people should be disentangled by indigenous religions, uh, because that is unhelpful both to understanding the religion of indigenous people and the indigenous religions so uh yeah that um because of course we don't have 
indigenous people in Italy in the way uh, you have indigenous people in the US, for instance. Um, but that's a political category and that's why uh, that's one of the reasons why I think it should be not attached to indigenous to indigenous religions. Carlos says my favorite movie is is Magical Practice. That's another one that I don't know. Is it a horror movie? Mm. Andrew says horror horror movie, poultry geist, night of the chicken dead. <laughs> Is it a joke or <laughs> does it really exist? Oh hi Equinox Moonchild. Nice nice nickname. So Ozzy SD asks so, if anyone is a solitary practitioner, such as myself, and is an eclectic pagan, does it mean that we should be excluded from celebra celebrating it in whichever way we want to celebrate it? Um, well, I'd say that you can celebrate <laughs> the way you want. Um, I, I don't see... I think that one of the, ish one of the um, uh, things about eclectic pagans or eclectic magic practitioners is that they um, individually tailor their practice they uh, so there is the, um, the tendency of bringing things even from different traditions and um, incorporate them in their own practice uh, in a way that resonates with them best uh, because if you do not belong to a specific tradition that has certain rules or certain structure or certain indications it's you know um, you are clearly more free <laughs> to do um, things that you resonate with I guess as long as one is respectful uh, Neha uh, asks how can I connect how can I connect you <laughs> I think we we can have some chat about a lot of things and also a potential opportunity to share your research on our platform if you're interested. Um, I'm not sure what your platform is <laughs> now, um, but um, you could you, you might want to consider joining my patron community because apart from interacting more with me, you will also join a, a community of like-minded individuals people individual sounds a bit strange but <laughs> yeah my inner symposium is quite fun and full of bright people and uh, so we have um, a private discord server and there's Andrew that um, that is running a book club and there's also another um, Another group uh, focused on um, magic, ma magi magic practices. So, yeah, it's a fun place. So, you can uh, consider joining there. And you can also send me an email if there's uh, something specific that you that you want to ask me. But if it is, if you are seeking, you know, um, uh, to have a uh, a more regular interaction, perhaps Patreon could be the, the best way to do so. Holy Lex says the best movie with esoteric undertones by far is A Dark Song. I highly recommend it. Yeah, I have it in my watch list. I have it on my watch list. So I think that I'm gonna watch it uh, shortly. Not shortly, like <laughs> today, but um, in the immediate future. Um, so Liesle says I'm a solitary eclectic pagan too. We can go and celebrate with other communities in my opinion. Simon says uh, Heil Hecate. Yeah Simon I don't know if you um, missed the, the part where I talk about Hecate but it's likely that I might uh, do research on 
on her as a deity in contemporary practices. So that might be interesting to you and to many others, I imagine. Oh, Andrew says that it was a real movie. Zombified chickens attempt to kill the fast food workers that cook them in a restaurant built on an ancient burial ground. <laughs> I'm sorry, I hope that I'm not being disrespectful, but <laughs> it's, it's, it sounds like a joke. <laughs> Marcus says, uh, Angela's patron community is awesome. I've had a great, a great time talking uh, to and learning from other practitioners. Oh, that's very nice of you, Marcus. You're a very valued member of the Inner Symposium. So you're awesome too. Ryan says, uh, ever seen the the movie The Craft, yeah, it's the one that I mentioned earlier saying that I usually watch it on uh, Samhain Halloween. A Dark Song actually does a great job portraying angels and demons. A bonfire is another popular tradition in Ireland on Samhain. Yeah. Uh, are you going to see the, the new Halloween movie? <laughs> I guess it's... Is it a new one? Where, uh, of the ones that we have mentioned earlier? Ariel... Ariel Glories uh, says solitary pagan as well. I celebrate Samhain, but I'm also trying to learn more about indigenous practices from Colombia so I can honor that part of myself by incorporating them into my own system. <laughs> I'm smiling to Marcus for, <laughs> the, for the, the emoji. Did you know that the word Samhain is the Irish word for November? Um, I think it's in modern Irish. Uh, if I recall correctly, um, Dr. Johnny Butler says that it comes from uh, Old Irish. And uh, it means it is kind of an inversion of the term for summer. And it means um, the end of summer. So Carlos uh, says magical practice. So I think this is the the right. This is the, the right name is magical. Is pra oh, it's practical magic. Oh yeah, I know practical magic. The one with Nicole Kidman and Sandra Bullock. Not a horror movie per se, but it's a good one. Like the craft. Yeah, I think that it's similar to the craft. Uh, I prefer the craft. But uh, practical magic is also nice. Simon asks, what, what is your opinion of idiot savant in magical practice? What do you mean? I'm not sure I I get what you what you ask. Donna says, so Samhain actually starts tomorrow. And end of summer, end of summer, I believe, yeah. Oh, hi, Donovan. It's nice to see in the, um, uh, in the live lots of people that usually comment on my on my videos as well as my patrons of course <laughs> um, but yeah because when you comment over and over then I start to remember <laughs> your names those that only comment once on or twice on a video uh, it's it's more difficult for me to remember the the name
Ryan says, still don't know the, the favorite Halloween movie. Holy Lex is asking, um, who's, uh, yeah, what are people doing tonight in terms of practice? And Ryan says, beer. <laughs> is that a magical practice, Ryan? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Oh, thank you, Donovan, for for your donation. <laughs> Here's to the most awesome channel. Oh, thank you, Donovan. That means a lot. <laughs> And uh, yeah, thank you, Donna, for um, mentioning the the uh, Irish the Irish terminology. Are you familiar with Dr. Jenny Butler's work? I imagine you might, but just in case, I'm mentioning her. Oh, Ryan says that drinking beer is a magical practice, of course. But, um, yeah, I, I will interview on my YouTube channel Christian Greer. I already filmed um, a short on my channel, a short video on my channel, when I was in Pisa for the conference of the European Association for the Study of Religions. And uh, yeah, we will be talking about psychedelic drugs and different ways of altering your state of consciousness um, in a way that is conducive to magic. Oh, Donna says that uh, she's not familiar with Jenny Butler. Uh, well, I, I recommend you look her up uh, because she's, uh, she's the expert on Irish folklore, uh, especially when connected to magic and paganism. Tiago is asking where where did you get your PhD from the University of Leeds Simon definitely a awesome channel is Jenny Butler coming on again soon I hope so if I can catch her in Ireland it would be fun to to do an in-person interview um, I am going to be in Ireland next year for two conferences so <laughs> I hope I I get to spend some time with her. Astro Gypsy says I'm doing an an involved bit of work to exercise tobacco. Involves a bonfire among other things. By exercising tobacco, do you mean that you want to get rid of the habit of smoking, or is that you are exercising the herb? of tobacco. Donovan says that he's done some psychedelics. <laughs> it's interesting how like in in transcultural shamanism you have um, almost a rejection of the use of psychedelics. It is more focused on the technique and they, they believe that you can achieve the same a similar altered state of consciousness just by using and listening to the monotonous sound of drums and rattles you don't necessarily need uh, to uh, you know to intake psychotropic drugs i think that it's fascinating the use of psychotropic drugs because it's not just about intaking the plant it's about um, establishing a relationship with um with the herb that you're taking <laughs> Donna says, uh, you, you will be made most welcome, I'm sure. We love Italian people, very warm. <laughs> Thank you, Donna. I think that most in most countries, Italians are, are liked. <laughs> I don't know why. Me, because we are, yeah, I guess that Italian people tend to be warm. <laughs> uh, 
and sociable perhaps I am I am like that at least but yeah a lot of Italians are Andrew says Jenny Butters YouTube can be found in Angela's list of channels on her YouTube homepage yeah that's true and there are also two interviews uh, Donna there are two interviews uh, with her on my YouTube channel one on the fairies and the she and the other one on Irish paganism oh Donovan is doing it for medical use yeah uh, Tiago says have you ever managed to cross the abyss <laughs> I, I can tell that you watched my my latest <laughs> short video um, as you know I don't really share my personal beliefs and practices but I think that it's a very interesting uh, thing to to reach that point of crossing the abyss and I find it to be quite akin to the to Buddhism to what um, you find in Buddhist philosophy Simon says, uh, do you have any experience with using shaligrams? Um, no, but also I don't share my personal experiences. Uh, here I tend to, I, I share the experiences of my informants uh, that I gather through research or what other researchers have found in their own study. Marco says, I'm excited for the chat with Jenny Butler. I've had uh, success charging... Or oh, maybe you mean uh, the one with Christian Greer on psychedelics, Marcus. I've had success charging psychedelics with magic to structure the experience, but most magicians I know never touch them. Hmm. Yeah, I think that it is a... Um, still a controversial topic perhaps that of psychedelics the festival of Sawin is about the opening of the gate to the dark side of the air that as well Astro Gypsy says Dr. Jenny Butler wears a lot of hats Oh, okay. I, I I thought you were mention you know, you were being literal because I, I thought I, I don't think I ever saw her wearing a hat. <laughs> but, but now I get it it is metaphorical, it's not literal. But yeah, she's great. She's also very nice as a person. Thomas says Italians are so friendly, they will talk to you when you speak Italian or not <laughs> yeah we are used to using gestures so <laughs> just be theatrical and <laughs> and and you will be okay I'm really interested in Enochian, in Enochian magic uh, Donovan says. Uh, I guess you, you have already watched my videos on Enochian magic. <laughs> Astro Gypsy says uh, she defended the PhD. That, that's gonna count for something where when crossing the abyss is concerned. <laughs> Yeah, that should yeah th that would have been the the a much better answer than the one I gave Astro Gypsy. I should have said you know crossing the abyss was my my PhD defense. <laughs> That's when I crossed the abyss for sure. A disintegration of my of my ego. <laughs> Tiago says, I love your channel. Hope you, you keep up the academic fun. Oh, thank you. Honestly, I can I can keep up doing this doing the work on the channel thanks to the support that I get from you. Uh, the different, you know, 
on at different levels of course my patrons and my supporters help me keep the project going financially but also um, all of you who like and share and comment on my videos you you are also helping the the project grow so that helps as well so obviously if you can uh, if you have the means and want to support me that is always welcome and um, it, it really helps me but uh, if you don't have the means you have other ways of uh, of supporting my work as I as I mentioned so every kind of contribution is really is really welcome and highly appreciated Andrew says there are two videos on the symposium on Enochian magic yeah Italians are friendly and outgoing but have but have hot tempers <laughs> yes <laughs> you you only see the polite version of me here <laughs> It's somebody's birthday. Oh, happy birthday, Gagan. Gagan? Mm. Prometheus says, I, I wish you a wonderful time of magic and mystery. Oh, that's very nice. So, I guess that we can end the live stream here. It was really fun to hang out with you guys. I hope that the, the short talk, which was basically a way of introducing <laughs> the, uh, you know, Samhain and uh, the festivity, hope it, uh, it was appreciated. And I most definitely appreciate you. Thank you so much for all of those who sent donations. It really helps me keep this project going. Um, so thank you very, very much. And uh, so I'm gonna leave you to you to your celebrations, uh, whether it's beer or <laughs> whether it's uh, going to the the cemetery or doing a pagan or a weekend ritual. Uh, however you celebrate, I just hope you have a lovely day. And uh, yeah, I will see you again in the next video. But um, also don't forget if you did like this live stream or if you are watching it <laughs> on demand uh, if you liked it please don't forget to smash the like button subscribe to the channel and share the video with your friends this one or other ones which perhaps are more informative <laughs> and uh, stay tuned for all the academic fun so bye guys and thank you so much for coming it's always nice to interact with you Bye.